Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to Jiu Jitsu, and this is Game of Thrones unbiased review by the channel Doherty. Elden Ring and House of the Dragons, <laughs> disgrace, Daddy. Okay. So, but he's kind of, uh, uh, you know, trying to find things or maybe trying just different things, I guess, right? Because he did the Morrowind unbiased review, something like that, which was great, right? I, I think you should do more game reviews with his style. But yeah, Game of Thrones also is branching out to TV shows now, so it's gonna be fun. Uh, been a lot of in the whole channel. I did the whole Roman series, I guess a year or so ago, right? So if you haven't seen them, you know, check out my channel link in the description. You'll find a playlist there. But yeah, the Dovet is just great. His unbiased review is really unbiased, let's just say, unlike any. So let's watch it. Game of Thrones is the TV adaptation of a fat nerd's fantasy fetishes. Set in a world so fanatically loved, you have to own guns to debate theories. Centered on the complex web of rivalries between squabbling noble families, the best way to appreciate George's giant narrative is to forget about it. Dig deep into the autism and learn of the wars, treachery and magical catastrophes caused by centuries of Targ shit incest. It all started when Eastern Sheepshaggers, the Valyrians, used blood magic to conjure dragons into existence, ordering them to conquer everything on sight. Preserving the cursed chromosomes that controlled such beasts by getting sc By the way, uh, this whole, uh, you know, Game of Thrones student, I remember watching some of Game of Thrones, like early seasons, but I haven't watched the full of it, and even then I couldn't really track the story, like, okay, the history of it and all that. So I guess it's gonna be an interesting thing to see, where somebody's actually going to explain what the fucking storyline is. Kai Hai on incest, culminating in an empire of inbred supremacists so cruel and decadent it triggered a volcanic apocalypse. Before that, when normal people had enough of the shepherd's filth, they migrated to Westeros, purging a race of magic manlets and forming multiple kingdoms, the strongest among them taking the Stormlands. Why the Stormlands? Because the first Storm King, Durin, was such a lad the daughter of the sea and wind gods gave up immortality to be his bride. Furious, the gods destroyed his wedding castle, so Durin declared war, rebuilding a stronger castle every time the gods nuked it, until he built Storm's End, a castle so strong he could nail the god's daughter 24-7 with impunity, naming himself oh, okay. Durin God's Grief. The constant storms are nothing more than the god's eternal sifting. Other houses have their own stories, like after icy demons from the north invaded, causing a long night, they got beaten back by a mysterious hero, with the first Stark building a huge ice wall to keep them and some plebs out, sacrificing human babies for peace and interbreeding with the demons. These words are not a warning. It's a threat. House Lannister, meanwhile, was founded by a lying schemer, this house or another was founded by the odd degenerate, and the Iron Islands, when first discovered, housed an empty throne made of oily black stone, said to have been built by half-human monsters from below the sea. For thousands of years, okay. the Storm Kings led a golden age where the weak feared the strong. The weakest among them, Aegon Targaryen. Like a swarm of locusts, the Targaryen family escaped Valyria's doom to find a new place to ruin. In his rage against biology, Aegon shagged both his sisters, declaring a war on <laughs> non inbreds and cheating his way into conquering the continent, making his half brother, Oris Baratheon, marry the Storm Lady to weaken Durin's divine bloodline. It didn't work. Forming the seven. <laughs> what I don't get it is, first of all, why whenever somebody writes a fiction, they have to rely so much on the real history, right? <laughs> okay, this is a guy who rules kingdom. Of course, he does incest because that's how it works. Kingdoms, the cursed centuries of Targaryen rule thus began. Cruelty beyond belief, endless incompetence, and madness. The madness and stupidity of Ares II. A product of 300 years of incest, Ares' DNA was such an affront to nature, all of his kids were either stillborn, psychopaths, or rapists. Born from a blood sacrifice, Rhaegar Targaryen, despite being married, couldn't resist his lust for Lyanna Stark, so he kidnapped her, got her father burned alive, brother strangled, and started a civil war, all for the pleasure of violating a little girl. Tark shoes everywhere justified this, claiming he was a hero of prophecy to cover up his crimes, denying to their graves who the real hero was. Born among salt and smoke, blood of the Duran, and breaker of chests, Lyanna's betrothed, Robert Baratheon rebelled to rid the world of the gods' worst mistake. Crushing one Tarkshu army after the other, Bobby met the Vile Prince in the Battle of the Trident, killing him instantly with his massive Warhammer. The Mad King dying as many Targs have, killed for ordering a massacre. 
his evil spawns escaped east, Rhaegar's zone were crushed, and Lyanna gave birth to a Targ rape baby, of whom his identity Ned keeps secret, unable to cope with his shame. After you've absorbed all of that, <laughs> including that the East is completely filled with eldritch gods, you'll be ready to start. Game of Thrones <laughs> begins think. 17 years after Bobby B saved the world. Without his beloved, he spends every day drinking and making bastards. Ruling the North, Ned Stark tells everyone Lyanna's rape baby is his bastard, Jon Snow, letting him join a prison colony tasked with protecting civilization from the savages up North, who united under one king to flee the horrible conditions of their homeland. Serving as the king's hand, Ned dismisses Bobby's prophetic warnings, foretelling of the day that Targs would ravage Westeros with foreign hordes if they aren't killed. Meanwhile, said Targs plot vengeance, the eldest marrying his sister Daenerys to a warlord, planning to soon ravage Westeros with his foreign hordes, only for Daenerys to lead to both of their deaths and make a blood sacrifice to hatch three dragons. Back in Westeros, Ned discovers incest isn't Targaryen exclusive, the scandal of which getting him beheaded, multiple houses rebel and Bobby is killed doing exactly what he loved most, killing monsters. The death of the show's protagonist sent shockwaves through the world, getting all even more invested on the ones that are still left. Embracing his duty as the rightful king and the fire god's champion, Stannis Baratheon begins purging the realm of its enemies. Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna say I'm literally following every single thing here, right? But I kind of, it kind of makes sense. Wait, wait a minute. Lots of these things were in the show? Because I'm pretty sure what like what seven or so season, which is not that less, right? Like that's like what seventy five percent of the series so far. Pre uh, last seasons, I think, right? Last two, one or two seasons. I don't know how many seasons were there, but last season was just like you know they created all this bullshit and they're just wrapping it up. I don't think there was a new storyline that much, right? There might have been some reveal here and there. So I don't know where this all this uh, information is coming from, but this is really interesting. How everything started, how dragons were created. I like how Jovet is basically, I mean, I'm not going to say this is the same level as the Roman series, it's really not. But I like his style of just, you know, just, you know, comparing uh, Northerners with that, you know, Sc Scottish people here and there, it's just great. Starting with his usurping younger brother with a shadow baby, because the only thing that can beat a Baratheon is inhuman forces. Thus starts the War of the Five Kings, driven by the evil madness of the illegitimate inbred king, leading the royal forces being Tyo and Lannister. Best friends with Bobby's father, he learned much. The day his vassals rebelled against him, he killed them all, shutting hundreds inside a gold mine, flooding it, and writing a song to mock the dead. As the one responsible for keeping the Lannister family from collapsing from the outside and inside, he is the only reason why the series wasn't two books long. Balon Greyjoy and Robb Stark betray their king by seeking independence, with said king being only stopped when he got nuked by Aerys' magic wildfire. And there's far more magic nonsense in the books. For example, Ned's son, Bran Stark, is guided by magic visions north of the wall, sent by an old creep. <laughs> and Bran like Stark photo. is guided by magic <laughs> I don't know. I always felt all that all that element weird. Like, okay, I knew that his character is going to be much important later on, because how he was kind of ignored at the earlier parts, right? I mean, if everything was amping up. Every every shit was happening somewhere else, and he was just like following some raven here and there, and just all weird shit. Visions north of the wall, sent by an old creep in a dark cave who's been doing it to multiple children. Yes. He's a Targ. His sister Arya travels around the world, becoming a faceless assassin and befriending Gendry, one of Robert's many bastards. Down west, the Iron Islands are taken over by Euron Greyjoy. Commanding a ship of mutilated mutes and mentally raped by the Targ Pedo, he plans to cast the world into an eldritch apocalypse to rise from it as a Lovecraftian god, Same. planning to do it by nailing Daenerys, stealing her dragons and sacrificing thousands at sea. Also warging as his dumb brother's prostitute during sex, for reasons unknown. Speaking of the devil, as the seasons and books pile on, Daenerys steals a slave army, crucifies thousands and abandons the east in ruins to make the west even worse. The series showing how pointless all this political bickering is at the face of the true enemy. If you're wondering about stuff you haven't seen on the show, it's because I'm focusing on the books. Why? Ah. Because the show's quality is directly proportional to George's writing speed. While making season 5, the show's writers ran out of books and just began winging it. Littlefinger, portrayed in the books as a political mastermind, gives up Ned Stark's daughter to skin flaying traitors for no gain. Stannis Damanis, a military genius, marches his army in plain- Wait a minute, that is fucking true, right? 
Okay, so that's happened after the fifth season or something. So by that point, it was not George's writing, right? The writers of the show was kind of winging. So it's their story. They changed the Game of Thrones somewhat. In the books as a political mastermind, gives up Ned Stark's daughter to skin flame traitors for no gain. Stannis. Yeah, th that whole element felt like uh, just a sword trying to create this kind of a weird feel to it, right? Like these are horrible people and she's with them. That's the whole focus of that storyline. Ignoring that that guy's mastermind, why would he do all this shit? The Manus, a military genius, marches his army in plain winter to get <laughs> frozen, deserted, that? and ambushed by those very traitors. Bran Stark disappears for a whole weirdly. season, and on and on it goes. It's at this point that I would recommend for you to just read the books. Worry not that George can't go a single page without a Bible's worth of food porn. Given the non-canonicity of later seasons, and the book that was promised still so far away, the series fandom was thrown into a perpetual war, debating which of their crackpot theories would rule the rest. For example, among the countless Targaryen civil wars was the Blackfire <laughs> rebellions, led by Tark bastards. A spymaster named Varys plots to place a boy on the Iron Throne he claims to be Rhaegar's son. Many don't believe him, analyzing clues and concluding Bobby's kill list was nowhere near enough. Stannis' daughter, Shireen, has a best friend called Patchface, an eastern fool that got struck down at sea by the Seafing Gods. Once rescued, he had gone mad, speaking in dark riddles of the deep sea. Many say he drowned, being resurrected by an eldritch god to act as his undead prophet. There's distrust for maesters everywhere. An order of highly educated scholars that control most sources of knowledge and communication in the world. The fall of the Targaryens, the death of their dragons, the disappearance of magic. Some enlightened souls claim that they are behind it all. The hole goes even deeper, reaching the bottom with the following. Reading through George's books, you'll find that he says many strange things. For example, of how in the Valyrian Empire, they use dragons to fuse stone into ornate shapes. But below the Maester Citadel, there's a fused dragonstone structure far older than the Empire. Nearby, there's House Dane, possessing the trademark Tark features, but moving west far before Valyria was founded. Near the shores of North Africa lays a... Are we sure that these are errors here, or maybe he's hinting at more mysterious things, right? Like, maybe the story we know so far is not all there is to it, right? There's more to it. So maybe these are not errors, they're hinting something, I don't know. But maybe I'm reading too much into it. An abandoned city, built from that same oily black stone. A city so evil, not even the jungle will enter. But here's the real kicker. Many speak of an eastern city called Ashai, all built with oily black stone and bigger than all major cities combined, Whoa. being home to dark rituals, devoid of most life, and south of an even darker ruin, filled with demons and dragons. Besides, it lays not. Oh China. my god, again, I'm gonna be that and gonna say that. Somebody should make open world game with this. <laughs> Imagine just walking around those cities that we saw in the shows, right? But there's also a region where it's you know, really mysterious, like, you know, one of those fantasy adventure things where you go in a, you know, I guess, monster hunter path or something where common people don't even wander and there are evil there, which every day, chaos and things are abandoned type of thing. This gives me that feeling. There are also the populated cities, but there are also regions that are many dangerous and it has black stone and bigger cities. This would be a great setting for some kind of, like, if not some great big game, big RPG game like uh, Elder Scrolls, maybe something like Kingdom of Amalur, how that was, where you just go from a map to map every terrain is somewhat different right and now you go to the last map it's a pre pr pristine made castle with the red uh, fucking crystal this and that it felt different this could feel something like that claiming to have once been a great empire. On their borders is a series of fortifications built with fused black stone guarding against eastern demons. Further, they claim the empire was one day usurped by a bloodstone emperor that brought forth an apocalypse, unleashing <laughs> demons upon the world. It only ending after a hero saved the world, remembered by all through various names. Have you realized the terrible truth? The Empire colonized the West alongside the Deep Ones. The Bloodstone Emperor caused the Long Night. His apocalypse cursed the Black Stones to be the same as the fishes. Ashai is the Empire's ruined capital. The Far East and North are connected. Euron will mimic the Bloodstone Emperor. And it all collapsed because it was ruled by ancient Tark shits. George's world building skills are something to behold. Yeah, as the shows and books diverged, many speculated which of the aforementioned theories would be legitimized in the show. It would after 
all be based on Martin's intended ending, and what an ending it was. Throughout the latter seasons, it becomes increasingly obvious what the show's directors spent their paychecks on. In the north, Bran Stark becomes a magic robot, downloading the old god's pedal hive mind and lose. Yeah, I mean, you can literally feel it, right? This is why I abandoned the show. They were pretty sure, like he said, after the fifth or sixth season, where they just start to wing it, right? You could see that they're focusing more of a drama, soap opera drama shit, than actual something unique, right? I mean, soap opera drama shit has been there for the from the first season, but there was a balance to things, right? You find things that are kind of interesting. Every season is something that gets revealed. There is something more, you know, fantasy, fictional, very interesting, rather than a soap opera bullshit. But in the later season, it just became too much like, okay, I don't want to watch some soap opera crap here, right? Who's banging who, who died, right? Characters dying left and right. That's supposed to be, you know, interesting thing. Who gives a shit? Losing all personality. Euron Greyjoy, harbinger of the apocalypse, is portrayed as a horny pirate that cock jokes his way into ruling the Iron Islands, all for his never ending quest to taste royal pussy. Said pussy, after getting humiliated by the city that despises her, nukes their religious leader, her popular rivals, and illegitimately usurps power. And for that, everyone loves her. Tyrion Lannister, renowned genius, concludes the only way to get his sister to help fight the icy zombies is to go north, physically capture one and show it live, to appeal to her humanity. It only succeeding because of the power of Durant's blood. Speaking of inhumanity, after Daenerys joined forces with her relatives, she invaded Westeros with 100,000 Dothraki screamers at her back. Cersei hid behind her castle, and Daenerys went from town to town, burning, looting and stealing her crops. Going north to fight her nephews in laws, Daenerys proves her Targaryen lineage <laughs> by getting wrecked by everything she can't burn. As for the zombies, hyped from chapter 1, an integral to more theories in the Citadel can cope her up, their made-up leader gets jump-stepped by Arya, and they all die off. Having first dealt with the lesser threat, season 8 then focuses entirely on the story's main villain. In the span of a few episodes, <laughs> Daenerys learns that Jon Snow outranks her. Yeah, I, I didn't see the last season, but yeah, that, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen the ending post on the where she just went, goes batshit and just literally kills everyone with, with a dragon or something. Yeah, common people and do, no give a shit, right? Like power got to her too much, I guess. The chromosome hierarchy, getting progressively madder, even legitimizing Gendry as a Baratheon in a desperate act to replace casualties. Against all advice, the day of prophecy came. Daenerys stormed into the capital with her last dragon, took over the city, and just started burning it down anyway, killing hundreds of thousands for the sheer joy of hearing them scream. Among the ruins and corpses, she holds a military parade, dressed in black to red banners and demonic wings, proudly claiming her her intention to conquer the entire world. This wasn't received well. They hated the writers because they told them the truth. Concluding a decade's worth of television, D&D wrap up all of George's dangling plot threads in the worst way possible, with the dragon tyrant dying exactly as she lived, just like her father. The Stark sees control. Yeah, I mean, I forgot his name. What the fuck is his name? All of George's dangling plot threads in the worst. Yeah, this guy, this guy, you know, his whole character feels weird. By by the end, it feels like, you know, I remember watching one of the clips that she goes back to her sister or something. His sister, right? What was her name? Sir? I don't know. Cersei, whatever. And that's how both of them die or something. Like, how many tons this character is going to take, right? From the start to the end. If you binge watch the show now, you're going to see how much his character goes one way or another. Where, like, it's just conflicting all the time. Worst way possible, with the dragon tyrant dying exactly as she lived just like her father. The Starks seize control of Westeros, with the lords electing their crippled psychic weirdo as their immortal god emperor, who then proclaimed aloud he knew the future and just let it all happen. In short, Game of Thrones is a cautionary tale about the dangers of incest, written by a man increasingly desperate to contain his worst impulses, doing it all as training for his grand masterpiece, Elden Ring. It's great. The series too. Highly recommended before you watch HBO's next series. It's all about dark shits killing each other. This review was funded by House Baratheon. Yeah, okay, wait a minute. Stormlanders donating the loot from over... Ah, there you go. Okay, seriously. The newer series, really? I mean, I'm pretty sure that's not going to be based on anything George is writing, right? And there's are going to be writers thinking, it's going to be another crap, right? Massive crap. Who's going to focus on some daily sort of bullshit with some drama here and there.
If people like that type of stuff, sure, go for it. But I'm pretty sure there are many souls that emphasize on that. So yeah, but I think, you know, let's just ignore the soul, the books, right? You can take the books and like, I don't know, maybe somebody could create a movie in the way far future, right? Or somebody could create a great, this is the age of games, right? I mean, games are getting so good that they can rival movies now, right? I mean, GTA 5 made so much money that it can rival any Marvel or any kind of, a, you know, easily. I'm pretty sure it's much higher, it's, you know, some billions or something, 1.5 billion or something, that's what the number was, if I remember correctly, right? So you can create some great RPG style open world game, where you can just, you know, explore the many area that shows didn't cover, but books are talking about it, but books can, you know, get you so far, right? Books are for, you know, reading can get you so far, reading can just tell your story about here and there, and then you use your imagination to picture what it was, this and that. But movies, show can take that a bit more if if they put effort to that areas. Uh, obviously, yeah, the show didn't even cover those dark areas, those black castle that whatever we talk about. That's bigger than the most cities, right? But games can definitely capture the feel of it because games give you freedom. You can go from King's Landing and fucking travel all the way to these places, which are mostly empty, you know, with the demons or whatever you talked about in the black black stone city. That would be so cool, right? So yeah, yeah. It, this was Doheti as yes, Doheti can be. Obviously, it wasn't great as the Roman series, but then again, this is he's talking about Game of Thrones, right? It's not about Roman. But yeah, he did even in the last portion, he get, took lots of jabs to people. That's what he does, I guess. All right, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the links under this link in the description, check out the link cards. Yeah, I'll see you next time.